All right, so here's the thing. We all know that shared hosting is a popular choice, but not perfect. Uh, slow load times, occasional downtime, and a-hole neighbors sucking up all your resources when you need them the most. Everybody keeps telling me that Hostinger VPS hosting is the solution, that it's the perfect stepping stone from shared hosting, especially when you see the price difference. But is it really the best VPS provider? In this Hostinger VPS review, I'm upgrading my actual website to Hostinger VPS, and I'm taking you along the entire journey. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly whether Hostinger virtual private server is worth your hard earned money, or if you should just keep looking elsewhere. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Upgrading to virtual private servers means having full root access, dedicated resources, better performance, and paying more money. Yeah, in this economy, are you crazy? But as I mentioned, Hostinger has an ace up their sleeve. Instead of Hostinger VPS pricing shocking your socks off, comparing Hostinger VPS versus shared hosting, I mean, you can start from, what, around $2 a month more than shared, and you get a pretty decently stacked server. I mean, it's not gonna blow your mind, but it's also not gonna destroy your wallet. I went with a KVM one plan, four gigabytes RAM, one CPU core, 50 gigabyte of fast NVMe storage. Now, why are we going with this? We're picking this because Hostinger allows us to upgrade whenever we want. So it's not like we're gonna get stuck with a low tier plan forever. And this way you can measure what your site actually needs before committing to a heftier price. Now, a few things that you should know first, if you use my discount link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen, you're gonna get a big, big slash of your monthly payments. That's amazing, but keep in mind that after the initial period is over, you'll have to pay the regular price. You can see it here. That's why I always recommend going for the longest billing period to get the most out of this deal. But to be fair, there are no extra costs or hidden fees anywhere. The sum you see is the one you pay. No, oops, you used 0.2 megabytes more space and now you gotta pay five bucks. None of that nonsense here. Another note, if you're new to VPS, they do need a control panel to operate if you don't want to go wild with the console, and most of these are free, but some do require a separate license, like cPanel. Hostinger informs you of this immediately and doesn't hide it in billing or anything like that. What's best is that you can just pick any free control panel, and if you don't vibe with it, simply change it, no fees for any of that. So yeah, I do believe that price is the best way to start your VPS journey. Hostinger makes everything so clear and simple that even I can do it all on my own and I believe you can too. Which leads us to why do I think you can manage everything on your own? Well, the initial setup is surprisingly straightforward. The setup took about two to three minutes, which is impressive. Hostinger also provides this browser-based VPS management panel. You can restart your server, check resource usage, and even access a web-based terminal. For beginners, this is gold. You don't need to memorize SSH commands just to check if your server is running. And the key point about you managing your server on your own well, it's this little guy called Cody. It's an AI assistant. Now I know what you're thinking, another lame AI that can answer five pre-made questions. Nope, this is probably the most impressive assistant that I have seen. It basically understands everything you ask. I also don't like it when AI support doesn't understand basic questions if you use the wrong wording. Here, it can tell you specific details about your plan, create step-by-step -step guides for everything, and just help you learn the ins and outs of VPS. I also really like hosting your VPS performance monitoring. I can see exactly how much RAM and CPU my applications are using. When my N8N hosting workflows started consuming more resources, I could stop it immediately and optimize accordingly. Second, the snapshot feature is fantastic. Before making any major changes, I can create a snapshot and restore it if something goes wrong. This saved me twice already. Again, I'm also learning, so you know, snapshots a lot of the time are paid extras, so it's a big plus that Hostinger allows you to utilize them for free. All right, next in my Hostinger VPS review, let's get into the numbers because performance is probably why you're considering VPS in the first place. Well, most of you. And the thing with Hostinger in particular is that the shared hosting plans are actually really powerful. What I mean by that is if you are not willing to work a bit on optimizing your server, then shared hosting might be faster. But if you do a bit of that work, then oh boy. 
So my site's loading time went from an average of around three seconds on shared hosting to 1.1 seconds on VPS. That's a very big thing considering Google now shows faster sites higher in search results since faster sites mean better user experience. The server response time is consistently under 200 milliseconds even during my simulated traffic spikes. So yeah, a VPS can make a huge difference, but you also have to put some elbow grease into it. Now, probably the most scary part about managing your VPS is security. You and I both don't have time to keep up with all the latest attack trends, so a good base protection is absolutely a must. And Hostinger does pretty well here. They include configurable firewalls, DDoS protection, SSH key authentication for secure access, and optional malware protection, monarchs that can be installed for real-time threat detection. You can also manage backup schedules and snapshots to recover from incidents, but naturally, for more sensitive projects, the extra protection is on you. I spent a weekend learning about Linux security best practices to set up a UFW firewall with custom rules and fail to ban for intrusion prevention. If you're not willing to invest that time, managed WordPress hosting might be better for you, but honestly, with a bit of support from the AI help bot Cody, you can follow step-by-step -step instructions to set basically anything up. So again, use Cody, it's excellent. Look, I'm gonna be real with you. VPS is not a magical solution, all right? It's not like you must upgrade from shared. If you're running a single site and you don't have time for messing around, I would recommend upgrading to a better shared plan rather than a VPS. Also, and I'll repeat it again, if you're not in the mood to learn, then just stick to shared. No matter how easy Hostinger makes it and how modern the controls are, you will have to move your brain around to get the most out of any virtual private server. So is Hostinger VPS good? Well, for me, the upgrade was worth it. Dedicated resources, more control of my website's performance and good automation options make it more than worth the price. Hostinger VPS 2025 isn't the cheapest option out there, but the easy use and reliability make it a solid middle ground choice. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. If you're outgrowing shared hosting and ready to take on a bit more responsibility, heck, even if you're afraid to manage a VPS on your own, there are so many fail safes and support channels that you will not be left to drown. Cody, man, that AI guy will become your new best friend. That's my honest hosting review of their VPS offers. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. Are you thinking about making the jump to VPS? What's holding you back? Or maybe you're already setting hosting your up. I read every comment, yes, every one, and I'd love to help you out if you have questions. Until next time, keep building. I'll see you later, bye.